Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. The last one was a bit shorter than usual. Today, however, we're back to full length, so let's get to it. Now, one of the big events in the last episode was the self-taming of a muffalo. And you can see that muffalo at the top of the screen. And at the end of the last episode, I asked you guys whether or not we should keep it alive. And I don't think there was actually a single person in the comments who was against the idea, so we are in fact trying to keep it alive as our pet. Now, since muffalos are herbivores, then it's going to be quite the challenge, for the simple reason that out here on the ice sheet we can't really grow plants. Luckily, from a few crashed cargo pods, we had a bit of hops and psychoid leaves, and both of those can in fact be used as muffalo food. Once our supplies run out, however, we will have to get creative. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, there are a few more things regarding the muffalo that I quickly want to talk about. The first thing is giving it a name. Now, I foolishly thought that just like you can rename your colonist, you can also rename your animals. However, to my surprise, that is sadly not the case. So, for the time being, we are unfortunately stuck with Muffalo 1, but maybe Cambia will give it a name eventually. That is also the second thing I want to talk about, animal training. Now, while muffalos are excellent caravan animals, they cannot haul themselves. They can only be trained to obey and attack, which I don't think is going to be super useful for us. And at this point in the game, it doesn't really matter anyway, because Cambia's animal handling skill is just way too low to even attempt to train the muffalo. So the only options we have at the moment are to milk it every two days, and hopefully we'll also be able to keep it alive long enough to harvest some precious wool. Once again though, we're still quite a few days away from that. Now as you can see here, Cambia's first milking attempt failed, but that is actually not that big of an issue. On a failed attempt like this, the muffalo's milk fullness rating remains at 100%, and so in a few moments, Cambia can and will try again. For the moment though, he returns to the research bench. We haven't been particularly busy at that front over the last two episodes, but today we'll once again try to get some technological progress going, and the project that Cambia is currently working on is solar panels. A few seconds after he started though, I realized that the muffalo could in fact be milked one more time, and this time Cambia also succeeded, and he's now in the possession of 12 units of muffalo milk. Milk can be used as a substitute for meat in various meals, which doesn't really make it that useful for us, considering our pretty sizable meat reserves, but milking the muffalo also raises Cambia's animal handling skill, and so all in all, the results are just too good to not use the option. The muffalo will eat our food regardless, we might as well get something back in return. In the evening of our first day here in this episode, then our first raid, a lone scyther attacks the colony, but that is nothing that we can't handle. And I won't even have Cambia get up for this one. Our deadfall traps are more than capable of taking the scyther down, and yes indeed, after trap number 3 he falls dead, and the attack is over. Now, at this point, also a big thank you to those of you who commented about the shift-click thing in the last episode. I was actually not aware of the fact that they added that feature in Beta 18, but I will try and force myself to use it from here on out. Queuing up actions seems like a very sensible idea, especially when it comes to stuff like rearming traps. With the traps rearmed, the Scyther Corpse in safe storage and a good meal in his belly, Cambia can now wrap up the first day of this episode and head off to bed. The next morning then starts with more research and the day actually passes by pretty much uneventfully. That is until in the early afternoon we have a large herd of elk passing by. Now, I admit it was a bit tempting to go out and hunt a few of them down, but we need Cambia to stay disciplined. We have more than enough meat already and I think our time is better spent researching. The game then however decided to take the decision away from me. One of the elk turned Manhunter, and now it seems like we don't really have another choice but to kill it. So here we are, Cambia moves out and heads into cover. Once the elk gets close, we'll have him fire a quick burst, and then we'll retreat, rinse and repeat. One interesting thing here is that because of Cambia's jogger trait, he is actually moving faster than the elk, even though his Megasloth Woolparker is slowing him down quite a bit. This of course makes the shoot and retreat approach a viable tactic. If we move Cambia early enough, the elk has no chance of catching up with us, and we can kill the elk without ever being in danger ourselves. Ah! 
In the end though, it's not Cambio's machine pistol that gets the kill. Just one split second before the elk can actually enter our base, the last deadfall trap gets him. And so the danger is averted and we can haul one more corpse into our storage room. And with that, our second day of the episode comes to an end, and number three starts equally uneventful. After a cannibal breakfast, Cambia goes back to researching, and things remain pretty quiet until at 5 o'clock in the afternoon we are being contacted. The Falcon men are holding one of her former colonists hostage, and they now demand a sizable ransom. Now, not only do we have nowhere near the money to pay that ransom, but I honestly also can't even remember how long Nicole was a member of a colony. I actually think she never even made it into our base, and so I have absolutely no problem rejecting the proposal here. Instead, Cambia can now go for his second round of milking the buffalo, and that goes smoothly, and his animal handling skill is actually up to level 2 already. I don't know exactly how that got up there so fast. He started with something like 4,000 out of 1,000 points, so that might have caused the quick jump here. Regardless, we are still one level away from being able to actually train the buffalo. Now we are skipping ahead a bit here. Nothing happened for the next one and a half days, and so we're back in the early evening, one and a half days later, as Cambia finishes the solar panel research. This now unlocks a secondary source of electricity next to the wind turbines, and one that is also a bit more consistent, at least as long as the sun is shining. Now, the sunlight levels are a bit of an issue on the ice sheet because we are so close to the North Pole, so we'll have one half of a year where things will be pretty dark, and one half where the sun will be shining a lot more than usual. Still, combined with the two wind turbines we already have, I think two more solar panels should give us all the electricity we need for the next few episodes. One more great thing about solar panels is that they are built flat on the ground, which is of course a bit hard to see with this top-down view we have going on, but it means that we can build them very close to the wind turbines without the solar panels disrupting the airflow. This allows us to build a very compact structure where we produce our electricity here, and in due time we probably should also make sure to protect it accordingly. Now, we also just had another escape pod crash near our base. The colonist inside, however, not what I would consider to be an ideal candidate, and so we're just going to leave him here and collect his corpse in a few moments. Shortly after midnight then, Cambia finishes construction, both solar panels are now up and running, and we have a nice stream of electricity coming in. However, there will be no rest for our tribal colonist. Just minutes after he has gone to sleep, we have another raid coming in. And this one might actually demand a bit more of our attention. Although, with only four guys and all of them only with melee weapons, I think our defenses can handle it just fine. So I moved Cambia up and into cover just as a precaution here. I am expecting our traps to do all of the work, and once two of the attackers are dead, I think the rest should flee. And that is exactly what happens at the same time as an aurora hits the ice sheet. And even though I thought about it for a brief moment, we will not pursue here. Instead, Cambia can collect the bodies and the loot and rearm the traps. In the meantime, our crash landed survivor is no longer surviving. And I just noticed it was actually a female. But when it comes to cannibalism, Cambia doesn't discriminate. And after being so rudely thrown out of bed, it is no surprise that Cambia goes to sleep early tonight. The loot is safely stored, the traps are rearmed, and I was actually so decadent to leave two of the less valuable items outside to rot. The next day then begins not with research, but with a bit of butchering. We now have three human and an elk corpse to slaughter, and Cambia can get right to it. Once the room is cleared of the remains, we are going to continue with corpse processing. Now it's the Scyther's turn, as Cambia will disassemble all three of them. Our plus tier reserves should get up to about 500 with this, and I think we can slowly afford the luxury of building with plus tier for a few things, for example doors, helmets and armor. Our next building project though does not require plus tier. Instead, we will have Cambia mine out some compacted machinery. We have a small vein just to the north of our defenses, and mining that out will give us a small amount of components. And components are now becoming an increasingly important resource, because as we advance technologically, more and more items require components to be built. 
And one such item will soon be put in place in our dining and research room. After completing the microelectronics basics research, we have unlocked the high-tech research bench. As the name suggests, this one is an upgrade over the simple research bench, as it improves the research speed and it also allows the research of some of the more complex technologies. Now it does require power to operate, but at this point we have enough to sustain it and I think it is a very fair price to pay for the higher research speed. Alright, here we are, research bench finished, now Cambia only needs to lay a cable and we're now ready for the next big project. Before we get started though, we have to take care of the muffalo. We are slowly running out of plant matter to feed it and like I said earlier, now it's time to get creative. And so for the next few days, our muffalo will survive on chocolate, hopefully long enough for us to find a different solution. And yes, I know we could start cooking up some meals for it, but that eats a lot of time and for the moment I would like to prioritize research. Speaking of which, our next project will be gunsmithing. Not necessarily for the technology itself though, but more because gunsmithing and blowback operation are both needed to unlock gun turrets. And I think turrets are something we should put in place sooner rather than later. The raids out here on the ice sheet are getting increasingly stronger and while our defenses can handle them for now, on Randy Random Extreme difficulty it would be somewhat stupid to grow complacent. So, gunsmithing is up first, however for the moment the power is out, we have no wind and a solar eclipse on top of that, so we'll have to wait until the next morning. And here we are now, Cambia sits down in front of the high-tech research bench for the first time and he stays there for the next few hours until we are once again being contacted with a call for help. Now in the past we have almost always offered our safety in these situations, today however we are going to ignore the message. We have enough human meat for the time being, our stockpile of dead men's clothing and equipment is already too large for my taste and since Cambia has quite a bit of research ahead of him, I don't want to interrupt the process with a potentially dangerous fight. The remainder of the day then passes by without incident and so Cambia goes to bed with the research project almost halfway completed. And apart from a bit of muffalo milking, things remain that way on the next day, until late in the evening a psychic drone makes life a bit more difficult. To be honest though, the timing of this one couldn't be better, Cambia is just about to go to bed and so his mood will remain exactly where it is and when he gets back up, chances are the drone has already disappeared. Now it took the drone a few hours more than anticipated and so as Cambia sits down in front of the research bench he is still suffering from the effects but even with a drone buzzing in his head he completes the research project. And with gunsmithing unlocked we immediately start work on blowback operation. With gunsmithing we could now use the machining table to craft a few new weapons but our machine pistol probably already outshines them all and so we're not going to waste the time and instead continue straight with the next project. The next morning then Cambia continues where he left off the day before and at 10am in the morning the psychic drone also finally disappears. In the evening then the next research project is already halfway completed but we can also see the muffalo has eaten through all of our chocolate reserves. So we'll now take the next logical step and we'll feed it lavish meals. Yes, that is undoubtedly a waste of precious food, but I really want to rush the whole research thing a bit and since Cambia isn't eating them anyway and we don't really have enough of them to sustain another colonist long term, the lavish meals will now go to our muffalo companion. And by the way, maybe you have noticed it, we have just completed the first day of summer. Yes, it is now once again getting warmer out on the ice sheet and that means temperatures could occasionally rise above minus 17 degrees. And if we have the temperature inside of the mountain base, we have a small risk of infestations. However, I think this summer we're going to risk it and then for the next one we are going to put a few more safety measures in place. It is now late afternoon of the following day and we have another crashed escape pod and once again I decided to leave Alex here out in the cold but just a few hours after that she would receive a small surge of strength, enough to allow her to walk off the map. But to be honest, I can live with that. Being incapable of dumb labor, she wasn't really going to be an addition to the colony anyway and our human meat reserves are also looking fine for the time being. 
Now that it's summer, by the way, we are also getting a lot more sunshine out on the ice sheet. The sun never really sets at night, and that allows our solar panels to produce energy all night long, which is of course nice to keep the base running smoothly. In the winter months, we are then very likely going to invest in some batteries. For now, though, we can make do without them. And it doesn't take Cambia all that long until another research project is completed, and we are now only one step away from being able to build gun turrets. Logically, that is now going to be our next project, but blowback operation itself could also be pretty useful, as it now allows us to craft more advanced weapons, one of them being the heavy LMG, a fantastic weapon for the early mid-game. Now, we're not going to craft one this episode, but I consider it an upgrade over the machine pistol, so we might make ourselves one next time. With the gun turrets research project well underway, Randy Random then throws another interesting event at us, as a pair of cows join the colony. Now, in terms of milk production per day, female cows are actually superior compared to muffalos. Combine that with the fact that we have a male and a female one here, so the ability to breed offspring, and maybe you can understand why I was tempted to keep these two. However, we are already struggling mightily to feed a muffalo, and so the decision was always going to be either the one or the other. And in the end, I decided in favor of our muffalo. Not only because of the emotional attachment, but also because cows are not really suited for ice sheet temperatures. Their minimum comfortable temperature is somewhere around minus 15 degrees, I believe, so while it makes sense for them to join during the summer, we would have to put up quite the effort to keep them alive during the colder months. That, combined with the fact that two cows probably consume as much food as one muffalo, convinced me to keep the latter. The next day then once again passes by without any major events, and the gun turret project already reaches halftime. And that is enough to briefly focus our attention back to slaughtering for the next day. The two cow corpses immediately get processed, and Cambia earns some leather and meat. The research project then continues strong for the next few days, but we can also see our muffalo is down to the last meal. And since we are now slowly but steadily running out of options to feed it with, we have a choice to make. Go the extra mile and keep it alive for a bit longer, or take the easy way out and slaughter it. And I actually went with your decision for this one. From the overwhelming support to keep the muffalo in the last episode, I also judged that you would probably not be in favor of slaughtering it, and so we are in fact now building a small kitchen to prepare some food for it. For this purpose, we have to reconstruct the entry here a bit, and because our steel reserves are pretty low, we also have to send Cambia out mining. And once we have everything we need, we can then finally construct an electric stove. Next to the stove, I then also put down a small 1x1 stockpile. We can put some ingredients here so that Cambia always has them in reach when he's cooking. That way, he doesn't always have to go back to the storage room. And we are also going to add a bit of a morbid twist to the whole thing, because our meals that we are preparing for the muffalo, those meals will be made from muffalo meat. Seems like with Cambia, you just can't escape the cannibal lifestyle, even if you're an animal. And from that muffalo meat, we will now have Cambia prepare simple meals. All the other meals need two ingredients, one plant and one meat. The simple meal, however, can be made from either the one or the other, and for some reason, even meals made entirely out of meat can be eaten by herbivores. So for the time being, seven should be enough, Cambia will take one for himself, the rest can be brought up to the stables. And so the muffalo situation is now solved, at least as long as we have meat, but we could also make some meals out of milk, even though we would be running that at a loss because the muffalo eats more than it produces. Ultimately, though, I think animals are the way to go for us. A husky or a wolf, for example, would be ideal if they can survive the cold, as they can eat meat and be trained to haul for us. The next day then finally marks the completion of the gun turrets research project, so we are now ready to upgrade our defenses. That and more will happen in the next episode, though. For today, I think we have made some nice progress. We have upgraded our power supplies, we have quickly completed three and a half research projects, and most importantly, the muffalo is also still alive. And with that, I think we can leave our favorite cannibal out here on the ice sheet. The next episode will once again surely be a busy one. In the meantime, leave your questions and ideas in the comments below. If you liked the episode, then I would be happy if you could give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, then go ahead and feel free to do so. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!